Hi, today I'm just doing a uh, sort of refresh video on our Q-tier technology. So this is a technology that allows you to have um, multiple types of storage. So as an example, that would be SSD and hard drives um, so that you can optimize where the data is stored. Uh, unlike SSD caching, um, SSD cache is just used to accelerate data. It's not actually used for storage. Um, doesn't add any capacity. Uh, with QT, the SSDs will add capacity, so your SSD and hard drive capacity uh, will be merged together as one space. Um, the NAS is going to monitor um, your data usage pattern, and it's going to uh, frequently move the data um, as it needs to. So data that's becoming hot, you're accessing it more often than any other data. We're going to move that up to the SSD tier automatically. Um, data that you were, say, busy on yesterday that you're not using today, we're going to move it out of the SSD tier, and we're going to move that down to the hard drive storage layer. Um, now, you can have up to three different tiers. Um, so you've got um, the ultra high speed, uh, you've got high speed, and then you've got storage. So typically, the ultra high speed is going to be SSD. Uh, the storage tier at the bottom is going to be just SATA hard drive, something like that. And um, then in the middle, you're going to have SAS storage. Um, so not many of our units will use the SAS drive. So most people will just do uh, the, the two different tiers. Um, but it's just going to move your data around by watching what you're using, your users are using, um, everybody on the NAS, and it's going to move the data where it needs to be for the best possible performance. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll jump straight into a demo. So here I've got the uh, TS-983XU. It's an enterprise uh, 1U rack unit, and I've got a mix of storage in it. Uh, so the, the first four bays are going to be WD uh, Red Plus 4 terabyte drives. So I've got those in the four bays up front. Um, in the SSD base, um, I've got, uh, in the SATA SSD base, sorry, I've got two uh, WD Red um, SA500 drives. These are four terabytes each as well. Uh, so I've got those two in there. And also in the PCI Express slot of the NAS in the back, I've got our QM2 4P 384, which is basically a card that goes in the PCIe slot and lets me put um, up to four. Um, M.2 NVMEs on it, so I've, I've completely maxed that out um, and I've got a, another bunch here of some uh, WD um, uh, Black, I believe, one terabyte M.2 um, um, uh, storage devices on there, so I've got four terabytes of those in total, um, so on each of those on the card in the back. Now I've allocated nothing to anything, to any storage yet, so what I'm going to do first of all is go to storage and snapshots, um, and now I'm going to create a new storage pool. The very first option you get in here is, do you want to enable Q-tier? Um, I will point out that this is only available on QTS. Um, if anybody wants to use this on QUTS Hero, it's not available. Um, every NAS that we have that runs QUTS Hero is able to run QTS, so you can just make that decision when you first turn it on as to which you need. If QT is right for you, definitely pick QTS as your option there. Um, so here I'm going to enable the Q-tier option. Um, so that's going to give me some options when I go to the next page of where I'm putting the data. Um, it's sensed I've got uh, no SAS drive, so it's given me two choices here, which is the ultra high speed section, which is SSD, and then I've got the SATA section over here. Uh, so for my setup here, I'm going to choose the two SATA SSDs, uh, the two 4 terabyte SA500s. I'm going to pick those as my uh, main tier, so I'm going to leave that RAID 1 as it's suggested. Uh, for the SATA tier, I'm going to pick um, all the hard drives, so the four WD Red Pluses. It's not going to show me anything other than hard drives here, because it knows that's what this tier needs to, to have in it, so that you can't accidentally pick an SSD here. Uh, so I'm happy with those, and it's picked RAID 5, I'll stick with that, that's fine. You could change it to a different mode, um, perhaps RAID 10 if you wanted it to work faster, so I'll just pick RAID 10. Uh, so that's going to give me RAID 1 on my first two. Um, and it's going to give me uh, RAID 10 on my uh, four hard drives. Now I've left the NVMEs out. I'm going to use those for another purpose in a minute. Uh, so I'm just going to click next on that. Happy to create that. Um, I'll leave everything as defaults here. I normally turn off the alert threshold, but I'll just leave it for now. And then I'm going to click create. Just a warning, uh, you're going to lose all the data on all the selected drives. I'm OK with that, so I'll click OK. Now, when this is uh, fully created, um, I'm going to go and create um, an SSD cache uh, using the NVMEs. 
so the way Qt is going to work is it's going to work on an on-demand basis. So as um, it's watching you move, uh, use data, it's then going to move the data. Um, so it's going to take a little minute for it to catch up and put the hottest data where it needs to be. Um, if you use an SSD cache, it's going to do that in real time. So an SSD cache works in real time. Um, as you're accessing data, it's going to boost it immediately. Um, so in the background, while we wait for the QT to catch up, the SSD cache can be, uh, can be assisting with that. Uh, so you only need a very small SSD cache to try and help out Qtier um, because the idea is that um, in the background the hard drives are going to be sending their data over to the SSDs as and when it needs to happen. Uh, so we're just going to let this, uh, this first storage pool get created. Once this is finished I'll come back and then I'll create the SSD cache um, on the, uh, the M.2 NVMEs that are in the back. So we'll just wait a moment for this to complete. Okay, so the storage pool has been created. Now it wants me to create a volume, which I'll do. So I'll click New Volume, and I'll just use pretty much the defaults here. Thin volume is fine. Um, click OK. Um, what's the size of it? Um, just for speed of the video, I'll just set this smaller, so maybe 500 gig for this purpose. Uh, click Next. Happy with all those settings, so I'm just going to click Finish on that. Uh, so that's now going to create my first um, volume, so we can see that there. It's just formatting and getting that ready. Uh, we can see that the uh, the logo for Qtiering has appeared next to the storage pool, uh, which means all volumes created uh, within this storage pool are going to benefit uh, from the, the Qtiering um, being enabled on it. Um, so as it's creating those default folders and different shares and things, uh, we can go in and take a look at the, uh, the options for it. So if I right click and go to manage on the storage pool itself, not the volume, on the storage pool, um, you can see there's a new section here at the top. So anybody familiar with the QNet would normally just see the storage pool heading. But now we've got a Q-tier auto tiering section. Um, so this is going to show you how it sets, uh, what it's currently doing. So right now it's set to idle. There's no data on the NAS. Um, but it's telling me um, what's used, what's not used. So as it's going through the data. Um, so there's no high speed tier in the middle because we didn't have any SAS drives in this particular unit. Um, but you can change it. So schedules, so automatic data tiering. You can click the auto option there. And you can change it to a manual, manual tier, uh, tiering schedule. So if you wanted it to not be moving data until specific quiet times throughout the day. Um, you can set that as well. So let's say lunch times, break times, things. So you can have it monitoring up to those points and then move the data when the, the NAS is a, a bit more quiet uh, from data access from different users. Um, I'm going to leave it on the auto automatic data tiering option at the moment, but that's how you change the different settings on it. Um, but it's going to give you a, a summary here of how much of your data um, is being used in the ultra high speed tier, how much is used in the storage or capacity tier. Um, so that's uh, that's how the, the Qtiering is effectively working. Um, so now we'll go into the uh, the cache acceleration. So I'm going to cache acceleration, click the plus symbol. Um, so here's the introduction to the SSD cache. Now I'm going to select the only disks not currently used, which is the uh, SSDs down the bottom. Now you can use all of them. I'm just going to use two, but you can use as many as you want. Um, I can use the other two for another fast volume somewhere else if I wanted to. Uh, so here I'm going to change it to a read-write cache. Um, I'm happy with it being RAID 1, so I'm okay with that. Click Next. Um, I want it to um, accelerate all I.O., so I'll select all I.O. I want it to be uh, fast for everything, and then I'll click Next. Uh, here it sees the uh, the main data volume that's being created. Uh, so that's the first volume we created, so I'm going to tick that one. That's fine. Click Next, and then click Create. Just a warning that it will erase anything on those SSDs, so I understand that. That's okay. Uh, so now it's going to create and enable um, the SSD cache um, on the NAS. So it's going to have both an SSD cache, which is based on the M.2 NVMEs, and it's also going to have Qtier, which is based off um, the hard drives for storage, as well as some SAS for SSDs for the ultra high speed tier. Um, so that's effectively um, Qtier set up with some SSD cache to augment the um, uh, the real-time nature um, that you might want uh, for your data um, so the SSD cache can help out um, but this is how to get a lot of storage uh, with the hard drives uh, which are relatively low cost compared to SSDs um, but then augment it with just a little bit of SSD capacity uh, just to make your data faster when it needs to be faster um, so yeah we'll wait for the uh, the SSD cache to finish creating there it's still initializing 
uh, we can go have a look at the storage and snapshots we can see that the uh, the volume is ready um, as soon as the SSD cache is enabled for the uh, data vol 1 we'll see a little lightning bolt appear next to it uh, letting us know that the SSD cache has been created um, and the reason we see it saying synchronizing at the top is because it is doing a RAID rebuild here um, for um, the, the redundant RAID modes that I chose for the uh, for the storage um, so if I was to go in here and go to manage uh, it's going to show us that that's happening. So uh, RAID Group 1, that's already done and finished. For RAID 1, that's fine, so it doesn't need to do any rebuilding. But when we scroll down to the uh, RAID Group 2, so we can see down here, this one is synchronizing, so that RAID 10 needs to be rebuilt, and we can get a resync speed information over there. Um, so that's effectively QT all, all set up, and we've got the lightning bolt just appeared next to Data Vol 1, uh, which means the, uh, the SSD cache acceleration should be enabling as well. Uh, so there we go, that's turned on and enabled. Uh, so now we've set up um, some nice uh, hard drive storage uh, with, with a fair bit of capacity. The SSDs used in that QT are also used for capacity, not just for acceleration. Um, and we've also used um, an SSD cache uh, to accelerate the performance even further. Um, if anybody has any questions on QTIR, do let me know. Again, this is just a, a feature for the QTS operating system, not QUTS Hero. Um, so this can only be used on QTS. Um, all right, thanks a lot for watching. And again, any questions, let us know down below. Thanks a lot. Bye.